Wednesday. You know what that means. Time for the Southern California Writers Association Hump Day Book Tour. I'm your host, Maddie Margarita, here with Diana Pardee on tech. Every Wednesday morning, the Southern California Writers Association turns our Facebook page over to a new writer to talk about their books and their work. This morning, we are pleased to have with us Robert Rollins. Robin, uh, Robert has directed several short films, commercials, music videos, edited videos for the Southern California Writers Association. Yay, Robert. Thank you again uh, for all your hard work. And has worked in visual effects and graphic designs for logos and posters. His photography has appeared in the LA Times and the Restore Hetch Hetchy. Did I get that right? Newsletter. Yeah, Restore Hetch Hetchy. Yeah. Hetch Hetchy. Okay, there you go. Many of the short films Robert has directed are collected in the science fiction anthology feature film, Dream Country. The Dream Country segment, Pumpkin Hollow, was screened at the LA Shorts Fest. Fest. Shorts Fest. Oh, I remember that poster, Robert. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that one. Okay. The Dream Country segment, okay, it was LA Shorts Fest. The Nightfall short was awarded the prestigious Telly Award. Magic Hourglass was shown at the West Coast Film Festival and also received a Telly Award. Recently finished post-production on his second feature film, a documentary entitled The Friendship, which we're going to talk about today. Uh, hello, Robert. Nice to see you. It's nice to see you. Uh, uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, well, I'm excited. Congratulations on your film. Uh, we don't have thank a you. lot of uh, film editors, creators, producers, directors, participants, and all of the the roles that you played in this film. So um, why don't you talk a little bit about the film and then maybe we could talk about what it takes to produce an independent. Sure. Um, the friendship is about my grandfather and dad and uh, my dad's brother, Jim, building this 45 foot boat in the backyard of the family home in Arcadia and then transporting it down by truck to Newport Beach and launching it, and the following year racing it in the Transpac race in 1959. Um, Transpac is to is where? The, the Transpac is from uh, uh, San Pedro Harbor and uh, Long Beach, then 2,225 nautical miles to Honolulu. Okay. Amazing. So did you write the film? I wrote the script for it. Um, I kind of I had to do a lot of different things for it because it was one of those things. It was a, a project that was uh, very organic, and I was discovering it as I was going along. Even though I may have heard about it as a kid, I didn't know the detail, the depth, or the details that it had with it, or even the amount of uh, historical stuff that uh, Grandpa and Dad and everybody else kept. It's such an interesting uh, proposition and project here. Was being so close to the subject, uh, did it make that easier for you or harder for you? Put this all together. Um, it would. It actually was easy in some ways once I familiarized myself with the material, but it was just a matter of collecting all that material. And then not only I did the interviews and I based the comments on the discussions with uh, the family members or the friends that are still around from that time period. And then as I went along, I was discovering that there was even more to the story. So I had to build out the story between the interviews with the narration and try to figure out how I put this all together. It's like one thing I never knew was that my grandfather uh, was the first person who created, uh, had a pool company in Southern California, but was the first person who did all that. And because of that, Walt Disney hired him to build the canals in Disneyland. I never wow. knew this. Uh, so it, it was just, it's a, it's a film of discovery about family history of things that, you know, I never really took an interest in for a long time. And then I start, and then I started taking a documentary class during COVID to occupy myself. And so I decided to do this. I thought it was going to start out as five minutes. And each week throughout the semester, I would be finding stuff. It would come in waves, whether it was photographs, slides, newspaper articles, eight millimeter film, 16 millimeter film. And honestly, and then of course, through the, but I didn't get a chance to see the film until after I did the interviews. And I was planning on building it all out with um, 
uh, B-roll, which is basically stuff that you go down to the harbor and you take pretty pictures and videos. But once I saw this beautiful Kodachrome uh, eight millimeter, 16 millimeter film, and you see the personalities and the people, you start to understand what the story is. So I leaned into that to tell the story because it was right there. It was home movies. And yeah, I, I, I was a little worried about cutting home movies because you know, how are you going to make a story out of home movies? And you just got to figure out what is good and what you just have to get rid of. Um, and it, I think that's what brings the heart to it is those home movies. You may not hear the people, but you see them and uh, the humor. Uh, and it, to me, the film is a gift in the fact that my dad died in 2015. And I don't know if people, everybody's the same in this, but my last memory of my father is, you know, when he was, um, you know, going through his Alzheimer's and that kind of stuff. But the, the gift this was is I got to see dad as a 21 year old and going on this adventure. And now that's my memory of my dad instead of him in his later years. And I okay, think that so, is- Okay, stop. <laughs> you made me cry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh... No, I mean, I, I think I think um, that's such a, a, you know, an honest and heartfelt assessment of the project that you probably cursed over and over again. And all those um, bad memories and all those tough times are probably gone and forgotten um, now with the, the final uh, product in the can, as they say. Yeah, um, you know, it's, it's funny when growing up, you're thinking you're, one of your heroes is Harrison Ford. And it's like, oh, I wish he was my dad. And then you find out, my dad was Indiana Jones. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's that's so great, Robert. And you know, as you were talking, you know, we interview a lot of writers and we talk about writers being storytellers. But the I think in a lot of cases, the real storytellers are the editors because they have to know what's important. They have to know the order of things. They have to know what's necessary. So when you were going through and editing this film, I can imagine you had some hard decisions to make um, and some potential rabbit holes that you either went down or were able to resist. Um, how, how did you decide what would be interesting for you? What would be interesting for the people watching and what was good for the story? That's actually a very good question. Um... I, I want this was a positive story. This is this is grandpa had a dream of making the friendship with his family and racing in the trans pack race. It was he it was a dream given form by uh, grandpa, my dad, uh, Uncle Jim and my dad's friends who all helped work on it. So it that's the thing I wanted to work on. We've had a, a, a couple of years with COVID and political stuff. You name it. We're. I wanted, didn't want to focus on anything negative. This is an adventure. This is a man's dream. And that's what the overriding arc of it is, is to tell a little bit about grandpa and then go into the building and the boat. I don't, I never wanted to go into what happened the boat because I really don't know. So I, there were things that I purposely left out, um, family history or stuff like that, because it was not part of the story. And, um, so I, I just I kept that going along because the story was about grandpa and the boat and everybody else was supporting characters and anything else that was difficult in that time period was not part of the story. So I purposely chose to leave that out. For, for you doing this and so this is third generation, right? This is third mm -hmm. generation, the friendship, uh, the friendship lives on through you and through the film. Did you did you feel responsibility for that uh, when you were doing yes, that or did, did, I mean were you actually uh, aware of that when you were doing this or was that something that hit you at some point I, I was I was very conscious of what I was doing I didn't um and I also was aware that you had um my dad's best friend D who is like an uncle to me or my uncle Jim or uh my aunt Marilyn and a lot of other eyes in the family watching what I was going to do and I didn't want to unnecessarily upset someone so I, I was i was very guarded because this is a family story so i would go to Marilyn, are you okay if i'm use this shot or um 
or Uncle D, uh, he was dating a, a, a young lady at the time, but his current wife, I didn't want to offend her by using that shot. So um, I, I purposely asked people and then I got permission to use things that I felt. And I would I would uh, I would ask them and I said, the reason why I want to use this shot, because it tells a story of them leaving on this grand trip and they're saying goodbye to family and friends and girlfriends to go on this. And I would explain that's why I want to use this person. Uh, is it OK? And they would give they would give me their blessings or they may not like it at first. I would have to uh, uh, work on it a little bit. And I finally got. I got my way. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what what is what is your family's reaction been to the film? Um have they seen it yet or are they waiting yes. for your uh debut? I've shared it with them all. They all seem to really like it. Um and they've seen bits and pieces along the way. And mom likes it. My nephew still has yet to see it, but my aunt Marilyn, uh Uncle D, Uncle Jim, they all love it, which is gratifying. Uh, cause I was really afraid that I didn't want to upset them. And it turned out that I told a good adventure yarn. For other people, it's a great story, but it's different when it's the people that are involved. Mm -hmm. um, uh, on, they're involved on a lot of different levels. So you have this wonderful idea. You have all of this wonderful material that you've put together. So, and, and you have a, a point of view, right? That you're going to tell the story through. So you have all of mm -hmm. that. So how does how do you go from that to actually showing this film in the Newport Film Festival, which is what we're looking forward to coming up shortly? How, how did you get there? How what was involved and um, what kind of journey was that for you? Well, uh, you, you probably remember because one of the times I was shooting, um, it was in early April, I was shooting one of the SEWA's meetings at uh, the Regency Theater. And I had mentioned to you that I was moving at the time and I was just in the final stages of post-production. So I was moving and wrapping up production and getting settled into my new place. And then on top of that, and I was trying to get it all done by July 15th, which meant that I had to get a lock. I had to get all the sound done. So it was kind of a rush to get the last bits done before uh, oh, I was even going off to Yosemite at the time, too. So I was just trying to get everything done and locked in to be able to enter into the Newport Beach Film Festival. And it, it really is you when you're entering into film festival, it's, it's the luck of the draw because they get so especially if it's a short film, they get thousands upon thousands of submissions. each how, year. How long is the film, Robert? 45 minutes. So it's just barely a feature film. So that's what kind of helped it. And it's it's actually playing with another uh, half hour film. So they're they're uh, they're back to back. And, but um, I'm really honored that it's worked out this way. So I mean, and, you, we skipped over the like the blood and the sweat and the, the tears and the sacrifices that uh, you went through to actually get the film made uh, and the time oh, yes. that it took and all of that good stuff. So. Tell us what's invested, what you invested in this film. Um, I mean, financially, uh, not just, well, financially and along with other things. Well, financially, I sold my uh, 1966 and 12 Porsche to finish the post-production. So it was, it was one of those things that I felt it was important to finish. I had a story to tell. Now I'm and... crying again, Robert. You're making me cry again. <laughs> Yeah. Sometimes, you, sorry, to, sometimes you got to do those do. things. Uh, and it was like, I remember dad telling me when he was doing it, mom and I talked about it. When he got married to mom, he sold his Jaguar and his Woody wagon so he could uh, pay for the, the wedding. So what dad had done sits in there. And I was using that as my example to finish this, to be able to do it. So that was one example. And it's just time uh and not uh having a lot of time to go out and do social things the only thing i made sure i did was get out to go camping or go do photography or work when i can uh that, so it, i very much spent the past couple of years working on this full time so that and that was going to be one of my other questions is how long did it take you to put everything together from i guess conception to birth uh fall 2020 was when i started and then July um, 4th, I finished. 
and I uploaded that to the Newport Beach Film Festival that day. So what is what is the what does life look like for the friendship going forward? Well, um, the what's going forward is I've submitted to uh, twelve film festivals. Two I heard from the Newport Beach Film Festival, and this, which accepted it, and the San Diego Film Festival, which took a pass on it. So I'm still waiting to hear from ten. The next one I uh, hope to hear from. Uh, which I would love to uh, get into would be the Hawaii Film Festival. And that would be just amazing because, you know, the story starts here in, uh, in Southern California and then ends in Honolulu. What better way to tell the story of the start and the end? Um, that would be amazing. I also have it submitted to Sundance. And uh, whether or not I'm accepted to go there, uh, it, the film to go there, I will be going there because it's like going to the Academy Awards. Uh, yeah, yeah, so absolutely. Uh, those those are the, the between the Newport Beach Film Festival, the Hawaii Film Festival, and Sundance. Those are the three biggies that I really would like to uh, get into. So we're going to have to wait and see. So I, I we all know kind of, or have a good idea of what happens to the life of a book once it gets okay. published. So you have the film festivals. Do you screen? Is there an attempt to screen the film as often as you can in other places? Does that? Um, produce revenue for you um does it just go to those film festivals and then wait what what happens to the film after that well the film festivals do several things for filmmakers you you go to a film festival and it gets you um exposure whether it's an audience or um you could be fortunate enough to have producers reps to come up to you and say i want to represent your film and try to sell it to let's say a netflix or an amazon or get get a theatrical run uh, or put it onto PBS. So that's one way. Or you, someone's there that there could be word of mouth and a distributor comes up to you and says, I want to buy your film. So those that's, that's the hope of uh, getting a return on your investment. The other way of doing it, which I am thinking about doing since um, is to, how, however this film festival is going, and, but since they've expanded all the screenings, um, I'm thinking about renting a theater for a night and uh, for walling it, which people can pay and come and that could bring in some income. And that will also help a distributor to see, hey, he not only sold out three screenings at the Newport Beach Film Festival, he sold out uh, another thing, another thing. And then I could actually say, OK, if it's that popular, it's more word of mouth is going around. I could do another screening someplace else and so on. Well, well, so. Uh... The film debuts when? Tell us what is coming up for the Newport Beach Film Festival. Uh, the new the the premiere of the film worldwide premiere is October fourteenth. It's a it's a Friday, and then they uh, have an encore presentation. But before we move on, so are there tickets still available for the yeah. premiere? There are As limited. Yeah, there are limited tickets for the premiere okay. on the fourteenth on Friday the fourteenth. Um, then there is, then Sunday, um, is completely sold out for the matinee and then, um, <laughs> which, which is rad. <laughs> I, 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 I have to say before I move on, this film has been a surprise top to bottom. I, when I started, I thought it was going to be a little five minute piece then it, it turned out to be something bigger and something more important and heartwarming to me. But you know, when you're telling a personal story, a family story, you don't expect that people would be interested in something like that. And for it to be accepted at the Newport Beach Film Festival was unexpected. I honestly didn't think it was gonna get in. And then, and then for people to uh, one almost sold out screening, a sellout screening, and they have to expand it to a third one. It, it, it blows my mind. Mom had to pick me off the floor almost the other day when I found out I got a third screen. I can't express my gratitude enough that people are interested in my movie, in my... Um... Oh. See, now, now you know how I thought before. <laughs> This is a very in my, emotional... in, my, in the story of my dad. So um 
<laughs> so it's um you know i never expected to make a documentary i always expected to be a narrative uh feature film uh filmmaker and here i told a story that touches me and touches other people i i think that's that's the a perfect place to end uh because i think that encapsulizes you know, the emotional response to the movie, the enthusiastic response to the movie. I hope everybody who sees this, um, if you can, will go to um, Newport. Is it Big Newport? Where is the... Uh, yeah, they, it's, the final screening is at the Big Newport. Uh, they could buy tickets at uh, the Newport Beach Film Festival. Uh, you, there's a sign that you could actually click on it. Go to Featured Documentaries and look for The Friendship. For the friendship. All right. All right, Robert, we wish you the best of luck. Uh, hopefully you'll, um, you know, let us know on Facebook what happens uh, uh, going forward and um, keep us up to date on this project and, and other projects that you have coming up. Do you have, are, have you moved past that? Are you working on other projects right now or? I am working on uh, putting together a, a, a feature film it's called, it's called Chrysalis. It's a science fiction first contact movie. I'm putting the budget together and I'm shooting the uh, the poster. Then I'll put that all together in the business plan that I've already written. And I'll start asking to see if I can find financing for it. So hopefully I'll be able to pull that together so I can direct that. Well, and if anybody is interested in being a film patron uh, and supporting Robert's uh, production efforts, um, how can they get a hold of you? Uh, they can get a hold of me uh, via Facebook or Instagram, which will um, I'll post. Right. But you can also get a hold Diana of me. will post that. Yeah. And then I will also post my email address, too. Well, great. Thank you very much. Uh, again, we wish you the best of luck and we will see you soon. See you soon. OK, Robert. All right, everybody, take care. Um, I'm Maddie Margarita, and this has been the SAEWA Hump Day Book. We all have dreams. Bob Rollins Sr. made his dreams a reality. In his backyard, he molded 10,000 pounds of lead into a keel upon which he built a 45-foot sailboat. He moved his landlocked behemoth from his Arcadian neighborhood to the harbor at Newport Beach. In a time before GPS, Bob and his six-man crew used only the stars to sail the friendship across the Pacific Ocean to Honolulu as they competed in the 1959 Transpac race. Bob Rollins lived his dream. And for his crew. It gave me a story for the rest of my days Thank you.